This is Mon Health Talk, providing a window into the Mon Health System and the dedicated healthcare providers who work there. If you'd like to comment or ask a question, call now at 304 296 0041. Welcome into this edition of Mon Health Talk. I'm Dave Wilson. Joining us this morning is Dr. Azuz with the Mon Health Sleep Center. Good morning, doctor. And uh, we're going to jump into sleep medicine today. Hopefully everybody's had their coffee and will stay with us through this program today. But uh, before we jump into today's topic, let's get to know our guest a little bit more. Tell us about yourself, where you're from, your education, and how you ended up with Mon Health. Uh, yeah, Dave. So I did my uh, training at West Virginia University in the fields of internal medicine and neurology. Uh, prior to that, I did my um, schooling at the University of Aleppo in Syria and uh, did graduate from WVU um, around 2001 uh, with board certification in neurology. And then I had main focus on sleep medicine and I became board certified in uh, sleep medicine as well. And uh, been in Morgantown since uh, the mid '90s, uh, enjoying practice, uh, practicing sleep medicine in uh, different facilities, and uh, been working with the Mon Health System for more than a decade now. Uh, got to join them more than ten years ago. Been very pleased with uh, the patients' care, and I enjoy doing what uh, what I do for my patients. Uh, and uh, so that's how uh, it all kind of started. Yeah, what kind of drew you to sleep medicine and uh, why do you enjoy it that much? Yeah, you know, sleep is such an important uh, feature that God gave us, really. it's uh, Nobody can function well without proper sleep. And uh, I, had, uh, I had interest in sleep always, uh, because I just find it interesting with what I did in my training uh, in, in, in the fields I trained in. I found that sleep is such an important uh, field uh, because it kind of, uh, it binds all these uh, uh, areas uh, that we uh, practice in all together. So sleep is such an important state, uh, I would say, where the whole body rests at night. And you're talking about the brain, the mind, the body. Um, all systems tend to rest at night. And there's a lot of physiologic changes that take place at night. So to me, it was kind of a, a, one of those uh, fields that really is essential. And it's uh, somewhat fascinating as we uh, learn every day something new about sleep. And that's how I really got into this field. Well... This is probably one of the questions you get right off the bat uh, every day. How much sleep should I be getting each night? So we do recommend for adults on average eight hours. So anywhere between seven and nine hours of sleep is the target. Of course, that's what we recommend. But uh, does everybody get that? Probably not. <laughs> I would say... Uh, a lot of folks out there, due to so many factors and reasons, probably don't get that much sleep. I think based on the National Sleep Foundation uh, uh, recent uh, statistics, uh, I think almost one-third of the U.S. adult population probably don't get sufficient sleep, so they probably get less than seven hours of sleep. So we always aim for a target of seven to nine hours, if possible. Now, does adults. that need to be continuous hours or can I add up all those cat naps I take through the day and go, well, you know, if you add it all up, doc, it, it, it adds to eight hours. Right. It doesn't work <laughs> that way. So <laughs> it doesn't work that way. So that cycling we go through the stages we go through during sleep, it's meant to be all together if possible. Now, having said that people try to take naps, which we usually don't recommend by the way, unless it's a very short nap. So doing those intermittent naps would interfere with the proper night's sleep. So therefore, it's probably a, not a good idea. It's always best to get sleep, you know, structured altogether. Uh, hope, you know, continuously probably better than, than uh, interrupted sleep. And that's where people get that what we call refreshed sleep in the morning when people wake up feeling refreshed, ready to go start their day. 
you know, of all the shows we do, uh, Dr. Azuz, this is probably the one where I break the most rules. And that even goes, you know, all right, yeah, I, I like my, uh, I like my sweets, I like my junk food, I try to exercise. But, man, I, I can tell you, I don't get enough sleep at night, and I take naps during the day, so I'm already breaking. The first two things you told me, I'm already off to a bad start. <laughs> Which, you know, but I'm probably not alone, though, am I? No, no, a lot of people uh, do this. You're right. And, and, you know, we get just driven by by the daily things we do, and, and everybody's got a different, especially nowadays with the pandemic, I think there's so many things going on. And people want to catch up with this and that. And, and then they're behind on so many other things. And, and then you try to stay more awake. You drink more caffeine, like you said, or try to take <laughs> more naps. And then it just doesn't work that way. At the end of the day, you find yourself behind. And the cycle goes on and on every day. And then we end up seeing folks and we try to sit down with them and educate them and try to help out, you know. So before we take the break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the disorders, the sleep disorders and how you treat them. But just generally speaking, how can we get a better night's sleep and, and get closer to that eight-hour target? You know, there's a lot of tips, and um, uh, this is what we we focus, and we spend a lot of time with our patients, educating them. So there's a lot of things that people should not do prior to bedtime, and uh, it's part of that sleep hygiene, we call it. Uh, so like you mentioned, Dave, you know, um, exercise and caffeine, that's fine, but earlier in the day. So avoiding, you know, caffeinated products, probably six hours before bedtime. And a lot of people don't know this, but that's what we tell them. Six hours before bedtime, avoid caffeinated products. Uh, maybe avoid alcohol consumption before bedtime. Exercise earlier tends to help sleep, but not exercise later in the day, you know. And then optimizing that sleep environment, the bedroom environment, the temperature, uh, a lot of factors uh, play a key role in, in um, having proper, efficient sleep. And these are the sleep hygiene tips that we always talk to our patients about. Dr. Azuz is our guest this morning at Mon Health Sleep Center. We'll talk about some of the sleep disorders he treats and how he treats them. We'll do that on the other side of this timeout. You're listening to Mon Health Talk on the voice of Morgantown, WAJR. Now, back to Mon Health Talk, a discussion of the issues, people, and procedures in healthcare today. If you have a question for one of our Mon Health guests, call now, 304 296 0041. Dr. Azuz, Mon Health Sleep Center, is our guest this morning. And, uh, Dr. Azuz, what kind of sleep disorders do you generally treat? It's a variety of sleep disorders, uh, and they're very common, by the way from insomnias, which is difficulty getting to sleep or maintaining sleep, to uh, sleep disordered breathing, such as sleep apnea, which is very common as well. Uh, we manage people with restless leg syndrome, which is another common illness that not too many people maybe uh, report or, or patients feel shy about reporting. Uh, we actually manage people with excessive daytime, daytime sleepiness, such as narcolepsy and hypersomnia, where people tend to fall asleep uh, during the day. Uh, also, unusual behaviors that people may have at nighttime, you know, sleepwalking, sleep talking, and other unusual uh, phenomena. So these are called parasomnias. Uh, so there's a variety of sleep disorders that we, uh, we manage, actually. So what are the potential impacts of leaving these uh, sleep disorders untreated? So on the long run, when people leave these disorders, some of these disorders untreated, the main concern is um, dealing with uh, complications that sometimes could um, affect the cardiovascular system. We see people with high blood pressure maybe presenting as uh, part of that. So on the long run, high blood pressure, maybe heart disease. We see people with irregular heartbeats when they leave some of these disorders untreated. And that could lead to strokes, of course, and other complications. One of the main things also we like to uh, address is uh, being sleepy in the daytime, Dave. People tend to fall asleep driving. That's one of the major causes for accidents on, on the road. So leaving these sleep disorders untreated could result in, in that sleepiness in the daytime and, and the risk of, uh, of that, as I mentioned. Also, 
people, when you don't sleep well one night, you don't feel well the next day. And people feel depressed on the long run. We see people with mood changes. You know, the person is not the same anymore if these are left untreated. Sometimes you see people with headaches. I, I see a lot of people with headaches. And, uh, and sometimes the reason is just not having adequate sleep, really. Um, I would also maybe like to mention that proper sleep has been really discussed and talked about lately as a, a booster for our immune system. So when you have good sleep, adequate sleep, that helps the immune system fight off infections and diseases. This is very important nowadays with the COVID pandemic. You know, everybody talks about proper nutrition, proper sleep. When you want to have faster recovery, you want to talk about preventive measures towards these infections. So I think sleep is important also for the immune system as well. Uh, it, well, it all ties back into that, that healthy lifestyle that uh, really helps in, in uh, well, I don't want to go down the COVID road, but it helps. It definitely helps. Let's, how about we leave it there, and you and I will stay out of trouble for today. Hey, uh, <laughs> uh, how, do you, how do you treat these disorders? Is it, uh, is it a medication? Is it about uh, changing your lifestyle, changing habits? Uh, and I understand each patient's unique and each situation's unique, but... Generally speaking, how do you treat uh, some of these disorders? Well, like you said, Dave, it depends on the disorder. So, for instance, if somebody, you know, is having issues with insomnia, you know, difficulty sleeping, then we got to sit down and educate them about all these sleep hygiene tips that I mentioned. There are certain uh, treatments for, for the insomnia that we offer called, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy. It really helps a lot. And when it comes down to sleep apneas, there are a lot of treatment options uh, that we offer. Uh, one of them is, is positive airway pressure therapy that really helps a lot in minimizing all the risks and the uh, complications of untreated you know, sleep apnea. And sometimes we offer medications for some of those who need help staying awake in the daytime. This is one of the major concerns, like I mentioned. So there are some medications that we use. There are some devices that we use. And there's a lot of behavioral uh, interaction and, and remedies and treatments that we offer also. So there's a lot of things, actually, that we offer. Our guest this morning is uh, Dr. Azuz with the Mon Health Sleep Center. Got a couple more questions, some more time with the doctor. Coming up on the other side of this timeout, you're listening to Mon Health Talk on the voice of Morgantown, WAJR. Now back to Mon Health Talk. A discussion of the issues, people, and procedures in healthcare today. If you have a question for one of our Mon Health guests, call now, 304 296 0041. About five minutes left in the show. Dr. Zeus is our guest this morning, Mon Health Sleep Center. Uh, do you treat patients of all ages? I manage uh, mostly adults, they've uh, 17, 18 years and, and older. Now, sometimes I do get involved with the younger uh, ages as far as monitoring testing, uh, but I do clinically manage the uh, mostly the adult population, 17, 18 and older. Um, is there a specific age range you typically see for sleep? Is there a specific age range where you start to sleep, see sleep disorders appear? Uh, well, I mean, every, right, that's a good question. Every stage you see different uh, group of patients presenting with a, a particular problem. So for instance, the younger ones tend to present more with the maybe insomnia or excessive daytime sleepiness. As people get older, we see more of the snoring and the sleep apneas maybe. Uh, restless legs also we see that tends to increase with age. Um, of course, children would have different presentation. Children may present with uh, you know, restless legs and unusual behavior sometimes and, and so forth. So, yes, each age group has different uh, presentation clinically. Is it possible to grow out of things? And and I, I use air quotes there. Uh, my parents told me that when I was a kid, I had a tendency to sleepwalk. Don't do it anymore as an adult. So can you grow out of uh, sleep disorders? Yes, a lot of things, actually. Um, you're right, a lot of things. Uh, particularly, particularly those sleepwalking or sleep talking, those behaviors that children tend to manifest a lot, we tend to grow in adults. Usually they tend to grow out of them, yes. So some things could be more common in certain age groups, and then it tends to improve actually with age. And others, 
tend to get worse with age. So it really works both ways. Uh, but yes, some of those do get better, actually. Uh, so, so how do I know if I have a sleep disorder, uh, such as sleep apnea, for, for instance? I'm asleep. I have no idea. So how do we diagnose that? Well, a lot of times it's usually the spouse or bed partner that brings the person to us, by the way, a lot of times. Now, very few times the patient may himself report that he's waking up snoring and gasping, for instance, you know, or he cannot sleep for a reason. Maybe he wakes up to go to the bathroom a lot. But most of the times the spouse, we, de we depend on the history. So usually they hear the, the patient snoring or they can see him stopping breathing. They can hear the, the gasping and that concerns them. And then that's when they call immediately and they convince the partner to come to the sleep center. So where is the sleep center located? Well, in Morgantown, the, um, uh, there are several labs actually in the Mon Health system. The one in Morgantown is on Pineview Drive, right below the Holiday Inn. Uh, there's one in Stonewall uh, in Preston County. There's another one and there's one in Grafton um, City Hospital. And, and when I get there, will I, are you going to monitor my sleep? Am I going to take a nap? I mean, can you give me in about uh, 60 seconds kind of a quick overview of uh, what a patient might experience at the sleep center? Right. So patients get seen at the sleep center uh, as a visit, uh, get evaluated. Um, and then we establish uh, a diagnosis. But then if there is need for testing, then the testing will be authorized and scheduled. That takes place usually at nighttime in the sleep facility or at home. At home is sometimes more convenient. There are, there's something called a home sleep study, and that, uh, that takes place at home. And, uh, and then the patient is seen subsequently at the sleep center to go over the results again. Um, it is a fascinating topic and one that I think we all sit and go, yeah, probably not getting as good a sleep as we possibly can. You, of course, can always get more information at monhealth.com slash sleep or call 599-7934 uh, for more information or to schedule an appointment. Dr. Zeus, thank you so much for the time this morning. Fascinating topic. I'll tell stories on me and uh, my sleep talking on another show. How's that sound? Sounds great. Thank you so much, Dave. Uh, appreciate uh, you having me uh, to shed some lights on some of these sleep facts. Thanks again. Thank you for the time this morning.